Hello, everyone. Come in, come in. Welcome. We're so excited to have you here. Filtering in. Welcome to our hashtag TX book chat series with Arte Publico Press. We have really fun um, presentation for you. We do encourage you, if you can, please turn on your cameras. Um, we'll feel like we're all in the same room together, which is a rarity, but we also understand that you may be doing six things at once, and this could be just a really fun thing to have on the background, and that's okay too. So turn, if you can't turn your camera on, please know that that is totally fine. Just know we are recording this and you will only have your, um, your image recorded if you unmute yourself. So you can just stay muted. Um, we are... <laughs> We were trying to remember how many of these we've done at this point, and we think we're at eight or nine. We're not really sure. That's something we need to kind of check out later. But we have had a fun run of the hashtag TX book chat, chat series. Um, I'm Rebecca, and I'm the coordinator for the Texas Center for the Book. And we are at has housed and supported and made possible by the Texas State Library and Archives Commission. And it is our goal to increase literacy, reading, and library use, and to celebrate the written word and literary heritage. And so you, you'll see why our guests are a perfect match for our mission. Um, we will be having time for questions at the end. So if anything comes up that you're curious about, feel free to just type that question into the chat and we'll do a little Q&A um, at the, the end for that. Um, yeah, so we'll kind of just dive right in. Um, I would like to just say that, you know, when we choose these chats, it's hard because we actually are now having people request the, to be with these chats and it's, it's such a great place to be in, but we really need to tend to be strategic and think like, okay, um, we want to have authors and different voices and different genres. And we also just want to kind of give you guys a, a sweet, special insight to some of the literary gems in Texas. Um, and Arte Publico Press is definitely a treasure in Texas. Um, our presenter um, for this, this wonderful chat is Marina Tristan. And uh, Marina is the exec, the assistant director of RJ Publico Press, where she oversees the day-to-day -day operations with a particular emphasis in marketing promotions for the press's books, authors, and programs. So she is a Texas native and she's worked for RJ Publico Press for more than 30 years. Prior to joining the press, she worked for the USA Today Houston Bureau and the Houston NBC affiliate. She is a graduate of the University of Houston with a degree in journalism and Spanish. And I just wanna say it is an absolute joy to have worked on this with you, Marina, and your team, and to have Arte Publico Press with us. Um, we can start loading that presentation if you want. And you know what, guys, we believe that the work that you are doing is exciting and we're so excited for you to share more of this with Texas. So. Whenever you're ready, you can just get started, Marina. Thank you. And guys, before she starts, I just want to make sure that you know at the bottom of your little uh, Zoom, there's a reaction button. And feel free to hit the clap, hit the heart if you have the update. Um, you know, you're going to stay muted, but we'd love, you know, for your reactions to come through in this presentation. So thank you, Marina. The thank floor you, is yours. Thank you so much. Hi, everyone. My name is Marina Tristan, and I'm the assistant director of Arte Publico Press, an independent publisher based in Houston, Texas, that's affiliated with the University of Houston. We're so excited to join the Texas Center for the Book, and thank you, Rebecca and the team, for organizing this chat. Um, I'm grateful we're able to connect virtually. Um, I hope by the end of this conversation, you'll have a better understanding as to why our motto is recovering the past, creating the future. Arte Publico Press's mission is the publication and promotion of work by US Hispanic authors. In its publication and dissemination of Hispanic literature and cultural information, we're committed to reforming the national culture to more accurately include, value, and reflect Hispanic historical and contemporary contributions. 
Art to Publico is a nonprofit, mission-driven publisher. We put out 18 to 20 books each year and have over 600 titles in print, all by Mexican Americans, Puerto Ricans, Cuban Americans, and Central Americans whose families have come to the United States. Art to Publico grew out of a literary magazine called Revista Chicano Riqueña, which was launched by the press's founder and director, Nicolás Canelos, in 1972. He was a faculty member at Indiana University in Gary, Indiana, and he realized there were very limited publishing opportunities for Latinos. So he started the magazine, which later became the America's Review. The journal was a launching pad for numerous writers, including Gary Soto, Ana Castillo, Denise Chavez, and Sandra Cisneros. Arte Publico published its first book, a poetry collection by New Yorican writer Tato Laviera, in 1979. In 1980, Dr. Canellos was invited to join the faculty at the University of Houston and to bring the press with him. The press went on to publish full-length collections by many of the writers whose work first appeared in the pages of the magazine, including Sandra Cisneros' The House on Mango Street. In addition to publishing the books, we actively promote the authors at professional conferences like the Texas Library Association and the National Council of Teachers of English. We also tour the writers to schools, libraries, festivals, and book fairs. Unfortunately, <clears throat> live readings at festivals, conferences, and bookstores are on hold for now, completely changing the way authors promote their work. But we're all getting used to virtual events, right? Especially since we can attend in our pajamas. <laughs> in addition to The House on Mango Street, other important books we publish include Zoot Suit, the first play by a Mexican-American to be produced on Broadway, and Y no se lo tragó la tierra, and The Earth did not devour him, Tomás Rivera's classic novel about the migrant worker experience in the 1950s. In 1991, we published our first hardcover, Reign of Gold, Victor Villasenor's family story of migrating from Mexico to the United States during the revolution, which the New York Times called a grand and vivid history. So now it's time for a couple of fun quizzes. Rebecca, could you please run them for us? Absolutely. So we just have two polls and you're going to be able to fill in the blanks and Marina's going to walk you through them. So the first one, uh, an Arte Publico Press author who writes and illustrates kids books is A, James Luna, B, Javier Garza, C, Lydia Hill, or D, Diane Gonzalez Bertrand. So you can uh, check the one that you think is right. And then number two, the author of the Clayle City Death Trip series is A, Henry A.J. Ramos, B, Henry Cisneros, C, Graciela Limon, or D, Rolando Hinojosa. And so I think we're gonna, um, Give you a couple, a little bit more time to make your selection. And then after that's been done, Rebecca will let us, well, she's going to end the poll here in a minute. Is that right, Rebecca? Yes, I'll end the poll in just about 10 seconds. I'm seeing a few more people into theirs. And so we want to make sure we have time. So just a few more seconds to get your answers in, y'all. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and end the polling. All righty, let's see how you did. So, um, well, the correct answer for number one is B, Javier Garza, and 33% of you got that right. Um, a lot of you voted for Diane Gonzalez Bertrand who has published a lot of books and is pretty well known in Texas. So I can see why you might have selected her name. Um, on the second question, the author of the Clayle City Death Trip series is Rolando Hinojosa, and a lot of you knew that. 78% uh, chose the correct answer, so good work, people. And so the next, um, I think I need to close that. Okay, so um, we published the work of several Texas authors, including Angela de Hoyos, Javier Garza, Pat Mora, and Gwendolyn Zapeda. Texas author Rolando Hinojosa has received international acclaim 
for the, his Clail City Death Trip series of novels about life along the Texas-Mexico border. And in 2018, he received the National Book Critics Circle Lifetime Achievement Award. Our books regularly win regional and national awards. And last year, we were thrilled to receive the National Book Critics Circle's Lifetime Achievement Award for our work. In 1994, we launched our imprint for children and young adults, Piñata Books. We published three types of books under this imprint, bilingual picture books, bilingual flip books for intermediate readers, and books for teens in either English or Spanish. One of our best-selling picture books is Pepita Talks Twice. Pepita Habla Dos Veces, about a girl's frustration at constantly having to translate for those around her. The author is Mexican-American, but this is a subject all immigrant children can relate to. Trino's Choice is one of our best-selling books for teens. The first line is, Trino had to run or die. He saw something he shouldn't have, and so one of the first choices he has to make is, do I tell or not? He decides not to, and then has to deal with the consequences of that decision. The Case of the Pen Gone Missing, El Caso de la Pluma Perdida, and Vincent Ventura and the Mystery of the Witch Owl, Vincent Ventura y el Misterio de la Bruja Lechuza, are examples of our bilingual flip books for intermediate readers. The English language text appears on one side, flip the book over, and find the Spanish version. The Case of the Pen Gone Missing is the first in the Mickey Don Hell Mystery Series, which takes place in South Texas and features a fifth grade web certified detective with a certificate to prove it. Vincent Ventura is the protagonist of the Monster Fighter mystery series with text and illustrations by Javier Garza. As part of our offerings for adult readers, we publish books in the Hispanic Civil Rights series. Books in the series include biographies of key leaders of the movement, such as Willie Velasquez, who founded the Southwest Voter Registration and Education Project and was instrumental in involving Latinos in the polit political process. Enriqueta Vasquez wrote about the civil rights movement from New Mexico, and Chicano gives the history of the movement. It was published in conjunction with the four-part series of the same name that aired on PBS. We also publish nonfiction titles that deal with contemporary social issues affecting Latinos and US society as a whole. This collection, edited by former San Antonio mayor and HUD director Henry Cisneros, contains essays by experts in civil rights, education, and healthcare, who write about the importance of educating Latinos so that this growing population doesn't negatively impact the well-being of the entire nation. A major Arte Publico program is the Recovering the U.S. Hispanic Literary Heritage Project, which was launched with seed money from the Rockefeller Foundation in 1992. The goal of the project is to find, preserve, and make accessible literature written between the colonial period and 1960 in the geographic area that has become the United States. The recovery project encompasses lots of different programs. We publish manuscripts found in archives, reissue books that were published but that are no longer available, and provide financial support to sc scholars for their research. One of the most important programs is the periodical literature project. About 200 Hispanic newspapers have been located and preserving them in digital formats was a high priority. These newspapers are very important because for many years, they were the only outlet for Hispanic creative expression. The papers published poetry, stories, essays, and even serialized novels. After making digital copies of the papers, our research team began annotating the literary items, which are now in databases published by EBSCO and Redex and available at public and university libraries. Students and scholars finally have access to material written by Latinos in previous centuries. In regards to Arte Publico's publishing program, we've been working hard for the past few years to make our books available in ebook formats. With grants from the National Endowment for the Arts, we've been able to convert our backlist titles to ebook file formats. New titles are routinely converted and distributed through a host of suppliers, including Amazon for the Kindle, Barnes and Noble for the Nook, Bibliotheca and Overdrive for school and public, public library patrons, and numerous educational wholesalers like Follette School Solutions. And of course, Arte Publico is on social media. <clears throat> I hope you'll follow us on your favorite platform. Rebecca, is it time for questions now? Yes, that was excellent. I mean, <laughs> who out there, write in the comment, I challenge you, knew 
all of those offerings of RJ Publico Press so much that y'all give us and offer and so much you're growing into. Um, thank you so much for that. And yes, you guys keep your virtual clappings happening. We'll do a real clap at the end if you'd like. Um, I do have some questions for you. And as I ask these first questions, I'd also like to encourage people to write their questions in the chat, but I'll kick us off. Um, so what makes books published under the Pinata Books imprint unique? Um, I think the, the really important thing about the books that we publish for children are that the books are written by authors, by Latino or Hispanic authors born in the United States, raised in the United States. So the books deal with issues that Hispanic kids in, in the United States can, can relate to. So they're not translations of Little Red Riding Hood. They're not books uh, that are written in Spanish in Argentina that use a Spanish that kids here don't use or that deal with life in another country. Um, so they're really important because they reflect the lives of kids here in the in the United States, and and we're we're really unique in that regard. We're the, really the only publisher that focuses on U.S. Ex, that focuses exclusively on U.S. Hispanic um, lives in in the kids' books. Wow, that's so good to know. Well, where can we get those books or your books in general? That's a great question, Rebecca. Um, so, you know, our books are really available through a wide assortment of vendors and sites. Uh, of course, they're available directly from us uh, by phone or email or fax. And I think uh, that in the chat, there's a link to where you can browse and order our books online. Um, yeah. but, but they're also available online from, you know, Amazon and Barnes and Noble to lots of smaller sites um, and, and more regional, regional wholesalers and book, bookstores. Uh, they're also available in school libraries and public libraries and academic libraries. Um, and you can always go to your local bookstore. And if they don't have one of our books that you want, have them order it for you. They'll be happy to do that. Um, so, so you can pretty much get our books anywhere. But they're not hard to get. I liked what you said just now about asking people to order them. I think with local bookstores, you're not only supporting the press and supporting their authors, but you're also creating an awareness for that bookstore to know about the, the, the offering. So it's kind of a, a bonus bonus. It's, it's, I think it's really important, Rebecca, because you know, for, for so long, uh, there was this idea out there that Latinos don't read, that they don't buy books. And so if they're not gonna buy the books, why should they be published? And so I think it's important that that the book trade, bookstores and books, book wholesalers know there is a market for books written by Latinos. And I always say, you know, I'm not African American, but I read Ernest Gaines. You know, I'm not Asian, and there's lots of books by Asian writers that I read. And so, um, you don't have to be Latino to read our books at all. Um, but I think it's important that stores know there's a demand for these books. So, right. I think we should go to our local bookstores and ask for, for these books. Ask for them and ask them to be out and ask them for, you know, say, you know, even even to be as direct as you want and say, I really hope next time I'm here that I get that those are out because I know I want to see them. I mean, bookstores listen to, especially independent bookstores, they listen to the population. They've been the backbone of Arte Publico for years. So credit where credit is due, for sure. For Sure. Um, I have other questions, but I want to see, check with Susan, our communications officer, if there may be any questions in the chat that we should pay attention so to. So far, we don't have any. Everybody think of your questions and write them in the chat. I see a nice comment about um, Pat Mora's book, The Desert is My Mother, El Desierto is Mi Madre. And an yeah. interesting little uh, tidbit about that. That was the very first picture book that we ever published when we launched uh, Piñata Books in the 90s. Um, and she had written that poem. And, and so our director talked to her and said, what do you think about making this into a children's book? And so it's a beautiful poem about the desert and the fact that the desert, you look at it and you might think it's, it's this empty expanse of land, but it's not, it's, it's full of life. And, and so, um, 
yeah, it, it is definitely, we published it in 1994 and we conti continue to sell a lot of copies of that book. So thank you for the person who, Catherine Wall. Yeah, Catherine, and thank you for bringing up Pat Mora. I mean, she's a huge, um, we're big supporters and fans of hers at the Texas Center for the Book and the State Library. And, you know, she created um, Children's Day Book Day, which we heavily support. Um, and she also, we was mentioned as one of your authors is Tomas Rivera and Pat Mora has the book Tomas and the Library Lady um, that is uh, also beautiful. I know it might not be one of your titles, but it's definitely one to check out. Yeah. And um, it looks like there's a question from Alyssa um, Arena, Marino, what is your favorite Arte Publico press book? Oh boy, put me on the spot, Alyssa. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Oh gosh, there's so many that it's really hard to um, uh, to you know just narrow it down to one. But uh, let me just go back to two books published this year that just coincidentally have to be uh, that that happen to be written for young adults. And one of them is called uh, Holly Hernandez and the Death of Disco. So it's a mystery novel. It's set in the '70s in New York City and during the disco era, and it's just so great. I love that book, Holly Hernandez and the Death of Disco. Uh, I'm not a young adult, but love that book and recommend it highly. And then another young adult novel that came out this year um, by a Texas author named Ana Garcia Scopper is called Wishbone. And it's about, um, it, it juxtaposes a, a contemporary girl's life. She's, you know, she sees herself as fat and she's told she's fat, she's ugly, she's Mexican, that she cannot be uh, the actress that she wants to be. Um, and, and it juxtaposes her contemporary story with her grandmother's story, uh, married to an abusive husband in Laredo in the 70s. So both uh, great books. Uh, and I think you there's information in the chat about both of them. So uh, nice question, thank you. And, uh, I see Susan, another question. Yeah, we do have a few here. Gloria asks, so what was your approach to marketing when you first started? How has promoting your books changed? That's a, a really great question. Um, you know, when we first started, uh, our primary market was academia. So getting our books, our, our founder and director was involved in, the, in that, that period of time when ethnic studies departments were being created. And so, um, you know, it, originally it was, communicating with professors and getting them to adopt our books as textbooks, whether it was in a Mexican-American Mexican -American lit class or a women's literature class or, um, you know, Puerto Rican studies or, so, so that was where we, we started and where we sold most of our books was as textbooks to, to university, um, to universities, whether for classroom use or university libraries. And then over the years, and particularly with the launch of, uh, or the publication of Reign of Gold, that was when we reached out and um, secured commission sales reps to sell our books into the book trade. And so, I mean, that was a completely different um, market and reaching that market is very different. So we started producing trade brochures and meeting with sales reps. And so definitely things have changed over time. And then of course, in the last few years, there's been such a change in terms of um, digital marketing, e-blasts, e social media. So, you know, like everybody else, we've had to adapt to that and, um, you know, promote the books on social media, use e-blasts, et cetera. So really a great question. Yeah, such a good question because as we know with the communications team here, it's like, as there are more ways to get the word out, there are more, more ways people expect to hear the word. <laughs> you have to figure that balance. Um, Susan, are there any other questions that we have so far? If not, I'll just launch into some more. From No, go ahead, go for it. Okay, so what is RJ Publico's uh, Press's rela relationship with the University of Houston? That's a good question, Rebecca. So we're a university affiliated press. Uh, that is, the University of Houston provides office space, our warehouse, services like legal, accounts payable, purchasing, human resources. Uh, but in the end, they don't tell us what we can and cannot publish. Uh, 
So in exchange, we bring to the university prestige in the form of um, awards, reviews, and and um, and funding because we're a nonprofit. We're constantly raising funds, and uh, our founder and director is a very good fundraiser. And so all of those things are good for the University of Houston. Uh, I always like to say I, I um, when I look at our colleagues out in the field who are paying, you know. $60,000 a year or $100,000 a year for a warehouse, and we don't have to pay for a warehouse, we are so fortunate to, to be based at the University of Houston and to have their support. It, it means a lot. Yeah, are there opportunities for the students at the University of Houston to be involved at all? Absolutely, and that's another, um, that's a huge um, opportunity for us and for them. Uh, we do hire undergraduate students as work study students or interns, we work with the English department and uh, to hire interns. And then for the recovering the US Hispanic Literary Heritage Project, uh, we hire at, at least six uh, research assistants. So students who are working on graduate degrees, masters and PhDs uh, here at U of H. And so definitely there's always, we couldn't do what we do without the students, seriously. Uh, you know, we're a very small full-time staff and the students are critical to, to the work that we do. Yeah, uh, Susan just wrote that as a former English major, that sounds like a dream. It does, it totally does. It does, it does. Catherine also asked, do you work with the Spanish department as well? Um, our, our founder and director's a, a, a member and our editor are, are both members of the, it's Hispanic studies, but so yes, they're, they're part of that department and, um, and the most of the research assistants that work for for us are doing their their graduate uh, degrees in that department. Not all. Some come from history. Some from English. But most come from Hispanic studies. So yeah. Um, and and again, I just have to say we've been so lucky in, in our students. It's been you know over the years we we've worked with a lot of really great students. So sure. Sounds like a well-oiled machine that keeps getting better. Yeah. Um, Okay, so I'm sure there are people on this this uh, session that are wondering, you know, how do your writers submit their work for consideration? What is that? What is your author process? Um, we used to have prospective authors mail their manuscripts to us. Nowadays, everything is done online. So there's a link on our website where authors can go and read about what we're looking for and um, then the, a, a link where they can upload a manuscript. And if you look in your chat, there's a there's a link for, for where manuscripts should be submitted. So um, it's pretty easy. Yeah, sounds great. And I'll say we're always looking for, um, for picture books, kids books, um, always looking for illustrators too. We, we'd like to work with more Latino illustrators. Um, so send your work. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you for this. And, you know, I feel like there's time for one more question if anyone has it, but if not, well, even if so, I just want to say, is there anything else that you were thinking about that you just wanted to share that you just wanted to like, let us know at the end here? Um, nothing, do you, do you think the press will ever have another scholar? So that's a good question. Catherine's asking, do you think the press will ever have another scholarly or literary magazine? And um, I don't think Arte Publica will, but I hear that Rice University is going to collaborate with our um, Recovering the U.S. Hispanic Literary Heritage Project to create a, a journal specific to that field. So um, stay tuned. Stay tuned, I like that. Well, thank you for this incredible presentation. Um, I'm so glad that we were able to spend time with you and thank you for your prep and insight. Um, you know, everyone, a recording of this will be made available with captioning um, hopefully by next week, if not the, probably the week after with the holiday Thanksgiving. Um, and you'll be able to find that on the Texas Center for the Book website. And y'all be sure to tune in for our next and final hashtag TX book chat for 
the year on Thursday, December 10th at 11 a.m. It'll be with Crystal Allen and on, engage, in, on engaging middle grade readers. Um, and just make sure you check out <laughs> all our future um, hashtag TX book chat series because that will be coming up um, in the new year. And uh, before we sign off, I just want to give everyone the opportunity, should you want to unmute yourself and clap, or if you just want to use the little reaction button, let's give a big round of applause. Yay! Thank you so much, y'all. We really appreciate your time. Thanks for what you're doing. Thank you. We're, we're grateful for you too. So thanks so much, everybody. Thanks for attending and uh, hope everybody has a lovely holiday. Thanks. Bye, everyone. Bye-bye. Thank you.